Let me solve problem segment tonight, as we told you in the Talking Points memo. At exactly the same time, there were peaceful demonstrations in Dallas last night. There was a rowdy protest led by Black Lives Matter in Oakland, California. Shattered glass this morning reflects the shattered nerves in Oakland today. This was the scene just hours ago on the 880 freeway. About 1,000 protesters stopping traffic for hours. It all started with a peaceful rally in downtown Oakland. Thousands of protesters expressed outrage and concern in the community. Some vandalizing stores, the Foot Locker, and Smart and Final. Question this evening is the group Black Lives Matter inciting racial tension. Joining us now from Washington, Hillary Shelton. Director of the NAACP in Washington, D.C. So, um, you know what I think. I think that if you really want, if African Americans really want to bring the country together and have good racial relations, they have to distance themselves from Black Lives Matter. Am I wrong? No, I disagree with you. But let me first offer my, our thoughts, our prayers, and our condolences to the families of those who lost their lives in Dallas. It was an awful tragedy. It should not have happened. We're all very saddened by it. We have to get to the bottom of that issue as well. The reason I disagree with you is I believe in my conversations with leaders of Black Lives Matter and even my participation in the demonstration in which we marched from the Capitol building here in Washington, D.C. to the front of the White House in a very peaceful demonstration with a number of members of Congress in much the same way those marched in Dallas, Texas, we saw things very differently. We have to take on those issues in a very significant way. Let us not forget two things, Bill. Number one is that those marches were for good reasons. Indeed, if we look at the disparities in the attacks of African Americans and the killings of African Americans by police officers, even unarmed African Americans, the numbers and the data is important as well. I heard you share a number of very helpful anecdotes, and anecdotes help make the story human. But the, but the breadth and depth of the problem are very well rooted in data. And if we look at the data, we see that twice as many African Americans and unarmed African Americans are shot by police officers than white uh, Americans in our society. That raises a problem. When we look at the images of those videos that we saw, and we see that an African American, though each of them had a gun, neither of them were reaching for the gun, and in both cases, those guns were quite legal. But I think we're all outraged to see the video on the wall and to see right. what we saw on our television screens. Now, here's, here it is. If you look at the amount of crime proportionally committed by African Americans is far higher than whites and far higher than Hispanics. Well, you, so you're you, going you, to have, just based upon, you want stats, these are stats. You're going to have please. more confrontation between law enforcement and African Americans because they are committing more crimes. But I don't, well, don't want to talk about that tonight. True. I want to get back well, because to... You'll, you'll need data when we talk about that. I'd I'd love to come back and talk about right. it. Well, I have, we have the data, data, and we've given it That's many, many times. Important. Well, we'll do that. We'll do uh, that. We'll share, but let's get, let's get back to trying to bring the country together. I yes. will submit to you tonight, and there are millions of people watching us right now, that there are very few white Americans who respect Black Lives Matter just because of what they did last night in Oakland, just because of what they're doing right now in front of the White House. There's not one sign up there saying, you know, the Dallas police officers, that shouldn't happen. We're protesting that too. And so white Americans despise this crew. And if Ooh, black Americans don't understand that, we're just going to grow further apart. Well, 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 first, I think you have to look at, at, at what's in front of you. If you look at the film clippage, clippage that you've even shown, what you see is that those Black Lives Matter marches are extremely well integrated. They're well integrated not only with oh, African Americans and Latinos, they're white, plenty of white so Americans. Shelton, you know look, who's look driving at, look the, the violence video footage. there. You Watch know it. who it look, is. Look, look, look at the video footage. It's not the case. When I was at the White House, there was not one incident of violence going on. People were there because they were equally outraged. This we're is a seeing, human American look, issue. The Dallas march was peaceful, okay? It wasn't yes. a Black and Lives Matter march. And the D.C. March, march was peaceful as well. It wasn't. Well, sure it was. was. A lo sure no, it wasn't. Was. No, no, no. It was no, a no. local it's, group. It's, it's my, In it's, Dallas, it's, it was a should, local group. You should group. watch your competitor from time to time. CNN had the <laughs> march organizers on. They were members of Black Lives Matter they and had their other organizations own group. as well. They had their own group under their uh, own banner. You, you, you and you I, should look, I don't care what the other my competition is reporting. I'm telling you what the facts and the police are reporting. It was a peaceful demonstration. It sure was. You go to Oakland, it isn't a peaceful demonstration That's because right. it's Black Lives Matter. 
And well, they they were know, both come on, black pigs in a blanket. That's what's the case in DC. Them. But but Bill, let, let's also talk about some solutions. And quite frankly, the reason that the marches were going on in all three places is because we really do have a problem with that's, the policies, and that's fine. the training, and everybody and understands the accountability that. Everybody of understands it. That's, well, they don't because we have not seen one piece of new legislation being passed by the Congress. <laughs> there are several bills that are now pending in the House and Senate that address the issue of racial profiling and the issue of the misuse of force by police officers, as well as body cams. As you realize, in the case of Baton Rouge, both police officers had body cams, but guess what? Neither body cam was on. That raises major concerns as well. The other side of this issue that we must talk about is the issue of guns. When you talk about what happened in Dallas, one of the reasons there was so much confusion about long guns being used is because there were about almost 10 citizens they were able to legally carry long guns on their back, and as police came in, what they didn't realize, of course, is the shooter, unlike so many of the other mass murders that have happened in our society, was carrying an AR-15 right. military-style assault I think assault that debate weapon. should be held about uh, what guns should be accessible to the public. Ooh, I want to see that both. debate, but it's not going to solve the problem, as well, the Mayor I disagree Giuliani with you. Does. The, it's the, not. The debate won't solve the problem. But the bigger I problem with in Giuliani. America right now is a growing racial divide. And Black well, Lives Matter is making yes. it worse. I gotta go. I disagree. Well, we I will disagree. Have, and that's I'll why we have to talk you on. about it again. Good, and that's good. why we I'll, have I'll you. I look forward on. to coming back. All right. We come right back. Twelve peace officers. Two civilians. Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. Murdering cops in Dallas. That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. In a vicious act of domestic terrorism, five Dallas police officers were shot dead, seven others wounded when a hidden terrorist armed with a semi-automatic assault rifle and a handgun, targeted cops at a peaceful demonstration. Police say 25-year-old Micah Johnson, a vet who served in Afghanistan, planned his mass murder after hearing reports of two black men shot dead by police earlier this week. We'll get to those incidents in a moment. Johnson, the terrorist, was killed when police unleashed an explosive device. The suspect is deceased as a result of de detonating the bomb. Uh, the reporting that the suspect killed himself is not accurate. We've confirmed that he's been deceased because of the detonation of the bomb. Well, our hostage negotiator did an exceptional job getting this suspect to talk before he died, during the hours of negotiating that eventually broke down. The suspect said he was upset about Black Lives Matter. He said he was upset about the recent police shootings. The suspect said he was upset at white people. The suspect stated he wanted to kill white people, especially white officers. At this point, investigators say Johnson was not a member of Black Lives Matter or any other radical group. There were three other people taken into custody, but police now believe they were not associates of Johnson, that he did act alone. Speaking from Poland, President Obama said this. Let me just say that uh, even as yesterday I spoke about our need to be concerned as all Americans about racial disparities in our criminal justice system, I also said yesterday that our police have an extraordinarily difficult job, and the vast majority of them do their job in outstanding fashion. Talking Points believes the vast majority, as the president said, of American law enforcement are honorable people. Less than 2% of all arrests made in the USA involve any kind of force by cops, however. There are too many incidents where minority Americans are being killed or hurt over low-level beefs. That's the truth. And law enforcement leadership must compel their own individual agencies to act with restraint. I support the police. You know that. And I do not believe they are targeting black Americans in general. I don't believe that. And the stats back me up. But again, fatal mistakes are unacceptable, and there are too many of them. If you watched The Factor last night, you did not see analysis of police in Minnesota killing 32-year-old Philando Castile in a traffic stop. You did not see that. 
On Wednesday, we did cover the police killing of 37-year-old Alton Sterling in Louisiana, but we used restraint in our report with Martha McCallum because all the facts are not in. I did not do the Minnesota story at all because facts were sparse and emotions white hot like Ferguson. Any thinking person had to know hate was in the air. You don't have to be a black man in America to know we have a serious problem with police killing black men. And we're in the 21st <laughs> century of high-tech lynching. Do you think African Americans are being hunted? Yes. Facts don't lie. I mean, you're literally getting death sentences in this country for being African American. I trust law enforcement to a certain degree, but my question is, can you please stop killing us? But even worse than those provocateurs was the governor of Minnesota. Would this have happened if those uh, passengers, the driver and the passenger were white? I don't think it would have. So I'm forced to confront, and I think all of us in Minnesota are forced to confront, that this, this kind of uh, racism exists. And uh, that it's incumbent upon all of us to vow that we're going to do whatever we can to see that it doesn't happen, it doesn't continue to happen. Now, Dayton may be right in theory, but you do not. You do not throw a rhetorical bomb like that just hours after a horrendous death at the hands of police. That's just dangerous to law enforcement. It's Dayton's job to provide calm, not to inflame the situation. Huge mistake on his part. Back to last night. While the Dallas protest was peaceful, at the same time, the Black Lives Matter crew, the Inflamers, were in Oakland doing what they always do. There has been some damage here on the side of the police department headquarters, Oakland Police. The windows shattered, red paint thrown out about, and the word murderers scrawled in that red paint here on the side of the building. At the top of the freeway, I have to tell you, it's sort of festive as the protesters are making a line, they're sitting in the middle of traffic. Some of the demonstrators actually jumped up on a tractor trailer. Number of arrests, destruction, the usual. So here's the truth in summation. Micah Johnson was a hater and a terrorist. Black Lives Matter inflames rather than illuminates. It is essentially a hate America group. Law enforcement leaders should make fair dealings with minority Americans a top priority. Finally, we as a nation need to fight the racial madness that is harming the USA by being fair ourselves and calling out the haters wherever they may be. And that's the memo. Next on The Rundown, we'll have complete coverage of the domestic terror attack in Dallas without any spin. We will begin at ground zero, and then Rudy Giuliani will provide analysis after these messages.